Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back. Um, I'm here to begin part two, as you've seen, of the title of the Ass and the Ox. Um, let me start by saying again, this is to help people who are stuck. Um, because a lot of times when we're stuck, the enemy has us bound in an area that we have really wound up bounding ourselves through ignorance or through, you know, um, not really recognizing what we're doing or what, why we're going through what we're going through. Um, and when I say the ox and the ass, it's more of a mentality or, or more of an action in our life that we're going through. So I'm not calling anybody an ass or an ox. <laughs> These are just characteristics, traits that we are carrying. And um, I'm going to sum, sum it up today to help people because um, as I was dealing with somebody, um, it was brought to my attention that she was stuck in um, the mentality of a donkey. I'll say donkey instead of ass. I know sometimes that's a little rough for people to understand. Um, some of the characteristics of a donkey, um, let's list those. They have a keen sense of curiosity, which is great. Even the Lord can work with curiosity. Um, they're not easily startled. You know, they're creatures that are pretty much stern, firm, and they're, you know, they stay in their ground. <laughs> um, however, they have stubbornness. That's the part that a lot of people don't understand. Um, stubbornness comes in so many ways, shapes, and forms that it can hinder and block our walk with the Lord and get us caught up to the point to where we build our own walls of protection because stubbornness and donkeys come from the sense of self-preservation. They um, have a good memory, excellent memory and a great ability to learn. Um, on a good side, that's great. You know what I'm saying? We all want to be able to learn. We all want to have a great memory. So, you know, you're probably like, how is that bad? It's bad in the sense that they, remember and hold on to everything bad. And it's sort of like it, it scares them. So, you know, if they had an incident, for example, where, you know, someone was leading them across the river and they fell on a rock and broke their arm and, you know, um, you took them back, you healed that arm and you go back to that river. They're like, no, no, no. You know, like, you know, I remember what happened here last time. And so it's a struggle then to get them back across that river. And um, that's a sense of self-preservation. And that can really block our walk with the Lord. Um, walking with the Lord takes complete trust in him. And that takes time. That's not something that's, you know, just you wake up one morning, and you're like, Lord, I trust you. I'm tired of not trusting you. I trust you. You know, you read a couple of scriptures. You're ready to trust the Lord. No, that is a developed characteristic. It is something that is learned of the Lord. That's why in Matthew 11, 29, he said, take my yoke upon thee and learn of me because it's a learning way. Trusting the Lord is a way of learning. And um, the ox are more capable of learning uh, new things and learning things um, of the magnitude that Christ needs us to learn because they don't have that stubbornness, that self-preservation that the donkey has. When something goes bad or wrong, you know, the donkey is scared to deal with it or go over it again because he's like, no, I remember what happened last time. And the ox is more being a bull. They're bullheaded. They're like, oh, no, I remember this and we're going to go over this again. And this time it ain't going to come out like it did. <laughs> you know, they're a little more aggressive with it. They're more, you know, like, oh, no, I remember this hole. We're going to dig this and we're going to get all this dirt out. We're going, you know, they're determined. And Christ needs that mentality in us. He needs that, you know, that ability. Christ himself had the ox mentality. That's why the four faces in Ezekiel, one of them was the ox and that represented Jesus. He told his parents at the age of 12, I'm here to do my father's business. In other words, don't get it twisted. I'm here with you. You gave birth to me. Thank you. But 
I'm going to be about my father's business. That's the ox mentality. Like I see what you're saying and I'm going to be obedient, but at the same time, don't get it twisted. I'm about my father's business. And that's the mentality we have to have for the kingdom of God. That no matter what, we're going to be about our father's business. So if you search yourself and find in your life that you've hit a um, area in your life where you're going around the same old thing or you're stuck doing the same old stuff or you're, you know, you're just tired of the same old thing that's going on in your life, whether it's with the same old people, whether it's, you know, the same type of job or, you know, um, you just find a, a spiritual cycle in your life where you can't break free. For me, um, I know every time around September, I started noticing between August and September, my funds would go berserk. I don't know what would happen. It, it's crazy. It's like um, no matter what I did, stuff would come and just attack my finances. Car would break down. Um, late bills with this, that, and other. And I wouldn't do anything differently. I just, I noticed my funds would be super low around September every year. So I began to pray and ask the Lord, like, Lord, what is going on? Like, I'm not doing anything differently. You know, why is he said, that's the problem. You're not doing anything differently. He reminded me even of naturally how we say, um, it's crazy to think that if you do the same thing, that something different will happen. You'll have a different outcome if you continue to do things the same. So he said, that's the problem. If you notice that this is happening, he said, then change something up. Be determined. Don't get frustrated. Don't, you know, because it was frustrating me. It was, you know, it may seem simple, but I'm like, you know, the biggest thing was the fact that I wasn't doing anything. Like I wasn't going out buying extra stuff for my hair or, you know, none of this. And my finances would be crazy to the point to where I would have to go borrow money from people and, and, you know, to pay my rent and it's looking to them like, what are you doing with your money? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's crazy because it's like, I wasn't understanding that rift that was there. And, um, he let me know. He said, the enemy is attacking you at this time. So he said, you need to dig and find out why. So I got, into my ox mentality where I was determined to find out through the word, through prayer, what was going on around this time. And one of the things that I found out was that the Lord's holy days come up in September and October. And it's a big celebration for the saints of God. It's, it's, um, it's big, even though we don't physically always have the, ability or way to celebrate it. Um, spiritually, we acknowledge God around this time. He, you know, when you're in tune with the Lord, he pulls at your spirit around this time, you know, like come sit before me, come, you know, I, I noticed that I was sleeping a little longer. Um, my dreams were more um, vivid, more, um, I had more visions than dreams and things of that nature. So I had to pay attention to all of this to sort of counteract what the enemy was doing. So I said, okay. And, and to most people, you would look at it like, well, we don't celebrate all of them days. So what? that's the problem. Even though we don't celebrate them physically, God is still our God. You see what I'm saying? And he still, you know, he still spiritually gathers his people around that time. So he inhabits the praises. The word says he inhabits the praises of his people. So, you know, we have praises that we've sent up before that he's inhabiting around that time. And the enemy is getting upset because our spirit man knows what's going on, but the flesh may not necessarily understand all that's going on. So it's sort of a battle and he attacks where we're weak, which would be the flesh for my case, um, because I wasn't understanding what was going on. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, he was taking advantage of the fact that I didn't know my ignorance and he was attacking my finances, attacking my because that's my blessing. That's my way of, you know, keeping everything smooth. And um, the Lord also let me know within that it brought me to him. You see what I'm saying? Those attacks brought me to the Lord because I'm like, Lord, what is going on? That was my instinct to go straight to him like, Daddy, something's not right. He's like, good. Now I have your attention. So let's talk. And he took me into some other things as well. So um, 
he began to deal with me about the ox mentality and how, you know, we have to be determined to push through and overcome. And um, oxen are strong. They're pretty much bulls. They're strong and they're willing to meet the challenge. Um, there are challenges in our lives that God will have not just for us, but for other people. And we have to be willing to take on that mentality to do it. Can we fast and pray for other people? Can we, um, you know, deny ourselves for a friend or a family member? You know, the word says that there is no greater. Hello, Isabella. That's Isabella, everybody. <laughs> the word says that there is no greater. Um, thing for a man to do than to lay down his life for a friend, you know, and in doing that, sometimes all it's calling us to do is fast and pray for somebody else. Wake up early and pray for somebody else. Sacrifice a little bit of your sleep, a little bit of your time for somebody else. It's not necessarily calling us to give up everything we have for other people or take on their burdens, you know, but, um, Something simple as, you know, praying for them, praying with them, um, spending time in your word, investigating their issue and giving them what you have. You know, that's part of laying down your life for a friend. Um, they're also their focus. Oxen are very focused. You know, they, they get the task done. They know what they need to do. And it's like, OK, well, I'm not stopping until I get this done. You know, so. Um, again, these are pretty much mentalities that Christ wants us to have. And um, the main thing to do about them is to pray. Find out what area in your life you're being a bit um, either lazy or self-protecting because self-preservation paralyzes you. The Lord told me that. He said, you know, you're trying to do things yourself and it's paralyzing me from leading you. He said, I can lead you out of the ditch that you're in. Even when it came to my finances, he said, I can lead you out. He said, no matter how, how much you, because I tried to save money. I'm like, all right, so I'm going to save from this check and this check, have a little nest. So when that st stuff hits, still wasn't enough. <laughs> he said, because that's self-preservation. You're trying to do it yourself. He said, you need to let me come in and get you out of the ditch. He said, now, he took me back to Matthew 11, 29, take my yoke upon you. Don't try to preserve yourself. Let me do it through prayer, through fat, fasting. You know, um, knowing that time was coming up, I started praying, fasting, you know, rebuking the hand of the enemy, um, praying that God will stay his hand upon my finances. And, you know, I started becoming my watchman that the Lord had called me to become. And that broke that cycle. It broke the cycle. So, um, I encourage you that if you have a problem in your life, something that you're going through that you find you're going around and around and around, whether it's spiritually, naturally, you may, you know, drink a lot and you want that broken. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him what he requires. You see what I'm saying? Dig deep within yourself. You know, sometimes we want to deal with the fruit of the issue and not the root. We have to begin to deal with the root of the issue because anything without a root will die. So if you can pluck up that root as to why you're doing the thing that you're doing that you no longer want to do, because it's like Paul. Paul said that, you know, things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I need to do, I can't do. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. You know, in other words, it was a battle going on on the inside of him. He was saying, you know, I know to do good. He said, but evil is forever present. You know, that's that battle. That's that tug of war going on within us. Um, but he knew to humble himself before the Lord. He said, it's going to be a little bit of a battle, but you know, I'm going to humble myself before the mighty hand of the God and just let God have his way. And, you know, I trust that it will all work out. So um, I pray that this helps somebody a little bit with the way we think, the way we um, go about things daily, you know what I'm saying? And this can also help us to um, see things further up the road. You know, some things we see coming and we just don't know how to handle it, how to, you know, we know we can't avoid it. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, what do I do with it? You know, well, you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Don't worry about preserving yourself. Pray about it. First and foremost, I tell everybody prayer is the key to a lot of things. And if you're not seeing your prayers being answered, I'll get into that a little later on. But um the enemy wants to keep you blind. So um, 
it's a lot to um, receive in the answers to your prayers. It's not anything on your end. It's simply, you know, knowing what to look for, how to give God praise, how to override the enemy, because the enemy is an illusionist. And he comes in so many ways, shapes, and forms that, you know, um, he's a trickster. <laughs> so I'll get into that another time. I thank everybody for watching. Like I said, I pray that this little bit helped you. Um, like I said, leave a comment. Let me know if it's something that any questions you have, any concerns, let me know. Um, I'll be back with my next topic because I believe the Lord gave me something else to help people over the humps and bumps in life. Okay. So everybody have a good day. God bless.